Alright, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Path of Rage, and today we have our Star Citizen Weekly News Roundup. We have got a lot to go over with the April Persistent Universe Monthly Report, uh, the Inside Star Citizen that just came out where they showed off a lot of the new upcoming 323 patches and a new vehicle, and a very long, very in-depth Star Citizen Live uh, where they really go into what's coming in 323 and uh, in the future of the game. Again, we've got a lot to go over today, so let's get right into it. Beginning with the Persistent Universe April Monthly Report. Report. I will summarize some of this and leave up the text in the background for you guys to read for yourselves because there's a lot to go over and we'd be here forever otherwise with me reading it out word by word. So, the AI Features team put a bunch of work into the Copion creatures that are being added in 323, uh, allowing them to move better across the terrain and attack in formations and, and, and whatnot, basically make them more believable in the environments where they're in. On the AI tech front, a lot was done this past month uh, from planetary navigation mesh improvements uh, that allow the uh, mesh and the, the NPCs to traverse the terrain more correctly. Uh, that was made. Uh, they also identified uh, components and fixes situ for situations where NPCs were standing on usables or couldn't get off of the nav, nav mesh. They changed the way in which they were calculating batch jobs, uh, which allowed for increased calculations, which, as it says here, provides much faster results and uses more CPU time where available. So again, quicker response time for NPCs at lower FPS, good for us. Uh, they worked on a new uh, user experience design with their internal tools and uh, implemented point defense cannons that will protect capital ships from incoming missiles. On the animation front, the dev teams worked on various creatures, including two predators and a, a prey animal. Now, we don't know what these are yet. I imagine we're going to find out soon enough, probably on an Inside Star Citizen. They polished player movement in space when you're prone and uh, implemented hit reactions for AI in the open. On the art character side, they began work on two more armors, a reworked utility armor and put in uh, support for character customizer requests. Um, and they also kicked off new hairstyles for Alpha 4.0 and started doing re research and development on fur. On the ship art side, uh, progress was made on the RSI Zeus, uh, getting the beauty and the polish along. The cockpit is now gray box complete. The mess hall is nearing completion. Uh, ceiling and personal, personal storage areas are being resolved. Uh, the cargo room had a ceiling had a pass as well. They've been working on the exterior, and ships are also being looked at for lighting, including a pass for every room in the entire exterior. The Legionnaire is now white box complete now, and the devs are currently exploring options for collapsible cover built into the boarding tunnel. Uh, and also, the resource network was finished for 10 ships, while legacy updates were made for three additional ships to support a new selection of paints. Now the resource network, if I'm thinking properly, that's the engineering. So they're, they're adding that into more ships now. That's Again, that's going to be a big change. We talked about that in a previous uh, weekly round of it. That engineering is going to change things. The audio vehicle team hit a milestone overhauling ship audio with new thruster sounds. Uh, they've also been doing a more extensive mix of audio assets for various sizes and classes and manufacturers of ships, introducing early manufacturer-based soundproofing so that each ship will sound different on the interior in first person. Uh, older ships are being converted periodically, but this will be rolled out with every new ship going forward. And they've also worked on ambience passes for the distribution centers in order to give them their own vibe. The community team helped with the April Fool's joke of the Misk Raptor and the Arena Commander mode that happened. They were supporting the Overdrive initiative and the new 
2.0 launcher, which I think is a, a nice upgrade from the old one. And they continue with the Bar Citizen World Tour, so you can check the link uh, on the website to find out where the next one of those will be. And they are currently planning uh, this year's Citizen Con in October. And finally, they're working on uh, this week in Star Citizen to give us more updates and upcoming gameplay features on the roadmap roundup. A ton of work went into the core gameplay pillars this time around. Again, I'm going to summarize just a few things here that stand out to me, but pause the video and read it all because there's a lot here. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of time put into polishing and bug f uh, fixing the 323 patch so when it goes live, probably this week, if not next at latest by the, the sounds of it, uh, they added support for hit marker sounds and recoil patterns are now the same for tap firing and holding the button, uh, holding the trigger down. The life support room system uh, has filters implemented that degrade over time and the life support generator will cease to work once all are used. I, w I wonder how that's going to uh, affect gameplay going forward. Uh, they made changes to the transit refactor, continued work on Maelstrom and the radar scanning feature. Uh, the contracts manager saw further development and ore missions were added back in where players can choose between objectives and general bug fixing was done along that. They worked on reputation based hostility and, and the core gameplay pillar also has been doing a lot of work on the freight elevators, item banks and persistent hangars. We know that that's coming in a 323 point patch but obviously that has been a big focus of the current patch cycle and I'm not surprised to see it here listed the branding and vehicle teams are working closely together for surprise surprise branding in star citizen and they're using an in-house tool that they're developing for all manufacturers from ships to signs that will keep things consistent and yet unified across the different brands uh, the Interactables team completed their work on the fire extinguisher, which you can see pictured here, including both low-tech and high-tech versions. Industrial cargo containers have had final art passes, which gives them more credibility as container storage. This is kind of what you'd expect to see. And the lighting team spent time polishing the distribution centers before moving on to the hangars and freight elevators, again, which we're still waiting eagerly for. The locations team was closing out features in Alpha 323, like the completed distribution centers, and they're now looking forward to us getting our hands on them, and now that we have, we're all enjoying these distribution centers as well. And uh, I'm also looking forward to seeing what they do with them in the future. The Sandbox team is finalizing the last few outposts for Pyro, for when we 4.0 shows up, so again, something more to look forward to. The mission design team was polishing the 323 content, including uh, the Xenothreat uh, missions that, that many of us uh, jumped into, were a lot of fun, had a lot of bugs, of course, and fauna-related missions, you know, the new Copion and so forth. Uh, they made quality of life improvements to various missions, and now they're going to further polish the cargo hauling and kill and collect missions. So more work is being done on contracts and missions overall. Look forward to seeing what changes they come up with. The narrative team was very busy last month preparing for Alpha 323 as all the teams are. Uh, getting ready for Invictus launch week which we'll go into uh, later in this video. And also they did a lot of pre-production work for Star Citizen 1.0 for the scripts and assets that will be needed for the full release. The online tech team completed a refactor of the social services backend and also completed work related to the easy anti-cheat that Star Citizen uses for uh, enabling the enforcement of sanctions. Uh, the live tools team worked to ensure compatibility between the networks and the modifications being made on the services and they continue to make, make and enhance development tools in the background to support maintenance. The R&D department actually went uh, pretty in-depth by the looks of it here with resolution mode, especially where it concerns the cloud rendering improvements and ground fog. And the way they've done this is, is in a way that will show more consistent and less noisy cloud rendering at a reduced GPU cost compared to previous very high, set, uh, high spec settings, show allowing more people to experience these with maybe a little bit lower hardware. 
Uh, they also gave support to the rendering team uh, for cache redundancies and uh, things that are just a bit out of my technical knowledge. Uh, support for various Vulcan issues, and they've uh, progressed work on the temporal render mode, which was tested again uh, against the various upsampling solutions supported by the renderer. The tech animation team was generating new head assets, saying that they're not far from completing the initiative of 40 heads per gender. Uh, they're working on complications of players and NPCs putting on and taking off clothes in, in the engine live. Uh, apparently that's uh, something that <laughs> they need to figure out. Uh, they're also being, you know, Intrinsic in creating and implementing new creatures in the Persistent Universe and Squadron 42, and they continue to support 323 as you would expect. The tech design team provided general support with bug fixing for doors and uh, fuel tanks not exploding in distribution centers, uh, weapon balance and AI work as well, uh, adding elevator panels to multiple ships with their call to action prompt, and Arena Commander Net Resource Network game mode work was also done. Again, tech design is involved in everything uh, Star Citizen related, so obviously their work is spread across the board. And the UI team in Montreal, uh, Montreal focused on the cargo feature and worked closely with core gameplay on the Resource Network man mandate, the UIs for the visors and Movi Glass and maps, and updates were made based on player feedback about the hologram effect on the HUD and how differently shaped quantum travel markers looked. And finally, the VFX team focused on bug fixing for 323, getting rid of major uh, problems that needed solving and trying to fix things without creating more bugs. And obviously, one of those things that they worked on, as mentioned here, was the water effects. Uh, a few of the patches that we saw here for 323 as Evocati had some very odd reactions in the water, and those have been dialed back and looking far more natural. Moving on, on May 17th, CIG will be launching the Invictus Launch Week, although this time around it's actually two weeks. Again, starts on May, 20, or May 17th, and players and non backers will be able to jump in. It will be a free fly event and be able to try out the various ships in the game and fly around them and in, in them and get an idea of what Star Citizen is all about. Get their hands on the game. CIG released a quick 45 second trailer, so we're going to put that up right now. Make sure to keep an eye on uh, all the little details in the background, including our first look at the Polaris, which we'll be able to see in game for the first time when the event starts. But let's get into the video. Turning to Inside Star Citizen, while I normally do a little bit more in-depth uh, summary of Inside Star Citizen, a little more point for point, this time around the entire Inside Star Citizen episode was focused on the upcoming 323 patch and the features that were getting in it. Uh, I've been talking about this in the last several videos. Uh, it it's, would be kind of me rehashing all of it that you've already heard already and there's a lot to get into with star citizen live so this is focused again on 323 the one thing i do want to bring out is the brand new vehicle that they showed off the mirai pulse is a brand new hover bike it's a very very small hover bike and it's Basically a garage rocket by the looks of it. It will fit in uh, pretty much any ship and it, it looks pretty sleek actually 
there's going to be two versions of the Pulse. One that comes with a laser weapon on the front and one without. And one without is mainly focused on uh, high-speed racing, as you might imagine. CIG said they deliberately kept it as small as they did so that you can store this thing in pretty much any vehicle in the game, including an Ursa Rover and the, looks like the Argo cargo ship, the SRV. Uh, you'll be able to take this thing anywhere and everywhere. The rest of the episode for Inside Starter Citizen goes a little bit more into depth about how they set up the components in uh, the Pulse and how the ship was designed or the bike was designed and it, what it, its roles and its purpose may be. Again, this was a decent Inside Star Citizen. It's other than the Mirai Pulse, it's a lot of information we've gone over before. I do recommend that you watch it in its entirety just to get you caught up to full speed is exactly what's coming in 323 and what to expect in the near future. Moving on to Star Citizen Live, we featured a lot of questions about the upcoming 323 patch. Uh, they were asked why the Merrick and the Copion were introduced to the game instead of some of the creatures that we've seen before, such as the Space Cow. And the devs said that it was because the Copion was the easiest to get in the game in the time frame they had. And the Merrick is their first implementation of Boids, similar to flocks of birds and schools of fish that are kind of meant to give a feeling of life to planets. They were the two easiest things to get into the game for this patch, so that's what they did. When asked about the economy in 323, the devs said that they are looking at prices being based on the size of the object, its make and manufacturer, and other such things like that in order for prices to make logical sense for the players for example the cost differences between guns or armor will vary between manufacturers ship prices are using the same logic with cost being based on the size of the ship what it's used for and so on with CIG bringing the ship costs into a more logical balance overall salvage has been adjusted in 323 to prevent players from Gaming the system and earning millions upon millions in a really short amount of time, pretty much breaking the economy entirely. Uh, this is being balanced out currently by changes to mission payouts. So long missions will pay more than they currently do. Same with higher difficulty missions. CIG is hoping that these cumulative changes will help stabilize the economy going forward. They did say that players should expect some significant changes to the economy systems going forward as they further tie them all together into a more cohesive system. They're also going to be adding more money sinks into the game to keep driving the need for players to actually engage with the various systems to make money and have something to spend it on so they can monitor the overall data of the economy to fine tune it. 323 will also have a partial wipe as well. The devs need to get uh, more data on these changes with a fresh start to the economy for everyone instead of players sitting upon millions and millions of dollars. Uh, CIG needs to see the earn rates of money in the game, how long it takes for people to earn enough to buy a new ship, for example, or how much they're spending overall on gear. And to be honest, with just how big a change 323 as a patch is to, this, to the game as a whole, I'm really not at all surprised that there will be a wipe. I honestly never expected otherwise. The new reputation and hostility system is coming in 323, but in a limited way. Grim Hex will be made a neutral zone at some point, and CIG will begin testing this feature there, along with a couple of the settlements with the Duster Faction, who will be neutral to the player. This means they won't attack you if you don't attack them, even if they aren't friendly to you either. Once these areas are implemented, CIG will be taking in the data to see how this feature needs improving going forward in order to spread it out through the rest of the system. And when asked about the new master modes and the reason for its implementation, the devs said that overall the goal was to make combat feel a lot less jousty, which it absolutely did, and more enjoyable overall, uh, making it easier for players to get into while still rewarding high skill players and they will be updating this system based on our feedback. As always, this is basically tier one. Don't forget, we're still in the Evocati patches and the EPTU patches. They will be getting a lot more feedback once this goes to live. When they were asked about the current input lag and the desync that's taking place in the EPTU, the dev said that it was related to the network backend and the repli replication layer split. 
and when server performance dropped below a certain level, these problems were far more likely to occur. And they've had a large number of their engineers actually working on fixing and optimizing these areas in order to make the experience smoother. And they think they have it mostly fixed at the moment, but again, time and testing on the larger live environment especially will tell the tale. One of the things that they did get into and spent a fair bit of time talking about was whether or not the 323 patch with all these new features is going to break the game in a similar manner to the absolute disastrous release of 318. Uh, and they noted that while they don't think it'll be nearly as bad as 318, the fact that they are adding a you know new foundational tech to the game means that there's always the possibility of things breaking. They talked about how important the live test environment is, again, thanks to the sheer number of people jumping into the game, which gives them more data to work with, more issue council reports, and just overall more to work with in order to narrow down uh, trouble areas and areas where they can improve. Senior Game Director Richard Tyrer said that the 323 patch, which is the biggest Star Citizen patch to date in the game's development, is the size it is and has the amount of features it does because they wanted to get as many of the shared Squadron 42 and Star Citizen features into the game as soon as possible in order to be able to focus even more on the features that will be unique to the Persistent Universe, that will, you know, define it as the MMO that it actually is. They felt that players shouldn't have to wait another year for these features to be brought into the PU because we've been hearing about them all for a long time now. This is part of their desire to hit certain large milestones for the game this year that will bring Star Citizen again more in line with the MMO style game that it's supposed to be. And a lot of these features need to be brought into the game right now in order for them to focus on the stuff that, that Star Citizen uniquely needs. They spent the rest of the episode in a sort of what's next discussion, touching on various topics for the future. First talking about the upcoming personal cargo and freight elevators. Uh, it's been pushed back to a 323 point patch because of how central the system is to the game overall. It, it, it touches every aspect of the game. You can't get around it. So because of that, in order f for it to be in the release, it has to be in a fully working state. Uh, in order to not completely break the game for everyone. Players' home location will remain the same even once the personal hangers come online, but players can always reset their characters and home location through the website and a character reset if they're willing to lose everything they've earned into the game at that point. You're probably better off waiting for a wipe or, or the next patch where they make you re-choose your location or manually moving all your stuff to a new location and, and picking that. Uh, Arena Commander may also apparently in the near future be used to test the new spawn clauses for FPS AI. So we might possibly get some kind of FPS horde mode or something similar to try AI uh, combat in Arena Commander, something that hasn't been done yet. We'll, we'll see. That was a May uh, possibility, not, not certainly coming. Bed logging was brought up because there's a certain amount of discussion going on about it and its usefulness and whether or not it'll be kept around. And they said it's going to be optional and not a requirement to log out using a bed with the ultimate goal being players able to log out anywhere at all and logging back in on that exact same spot complete with the ongoing missions that, that they were working on and everything just as it was. Um, they intend for players who do log out in a bed to possibly get a buff for sleeping, like an in-game stamina boost or something like that. But logging out will be wherever you are. Bed logging will be optional, but it will always be part of the game. Solo players were also brought up and where they fit into the Star Citizen universe. And the devs said that solo players will still be able to do most things in the game. But at a certain point, players will need to party up to do certain content. I mean, this makes perfect sense if you think about something like raids and other MMOs. You just can't do them solo. They're meant for teams. Star Citizen will be the same. Most content will be doable solo, if more difficult in some cases, but some will not. Uh, they use the example of, of building your own Idris, uh, uh, gathering all the materials that you would need to do so and gathering the license and so forth. While you can do that solo if you really want to, 
and they aren't going to stop anyone from trying, it will be far easier to accomplish that type of task with friends or an organization helping out. Same thing with if you just look at piloting and using an Idris. It's a ship that is meant to be crewed by a large group of people. The pilot will only be able to move the ship. Can't fire the guns, can't do the engineering, can't do anything but pilot. So you require friendly help to, in order to run that ship efficiently. This is going to be the case throughout Star Citizen. Yes, you can solo most stuff. Some stuff you won't be able to. That's just the nature of the game. They did say that down the road, hiring AI to crew your ships with you is still entirely intended, but it is farther down the road and definitely not anything on the near horizon. Finally, they also said that even though it's not coming out with 323, uh, or the, the initial release, maybe a later one, uh, we should be seeing night vision on certain weapon optics in the near future. They did say that it's more of a light enhancement rather than night vision like you might stereotypically think of with the green or the thermals. It's more, it's just actually bright and you can see. Uh, visors and helmets will be further down the line in development just because of how they work in the back end. Requires a little bit more programming. And finally, as of the recording of this video, there is a brand new patch on the PTU for every, or EPTU for all backers to try. If you are a backer of this game and you're wondering what the big uh, hubaloo about 323 is, now is your chance to get in on it and give it a try. Uh, it's a large, large change from the current live environment. I like it a lot. Yes, it's buggy. Please make no mistake about that. But it does give you a really good idea of where this game is going and the progress that's being made and if you haven't checked it out yet i strongly suggest you do in the meantime that has been it for our star citizen weekend review for the news i hope you enjoyed it if you thought i did a good job give me a thumbs up if not give me a thumbs down again as always sound off in the comments below about anything about this game i love to hear from you subscribe if you're new to help me grow the channel and until next time i've been ray jack games and i'll see you in the verse